space, space, space. Hmm. Needless I say, you know what I'm saying? Peace to. You know what I'm saying? You know. But anyway, peace to the gods and the earth. Peace to all the positive people in the universe. You know what I'm saying? And those that are negative, I mean, you know, just find something positive to do with yourself. Anyway, so today's topic, right? I just want to go in a little bit on, um, you know, uh, a post I had put up earlier. I put up a post that said, um, you know, in, in an infinite universe, you know, how do people think that, uh, yeah, let me share my screen. I said, how do people think that, you know, some kind of mysterious God created or controls it? You know what I mean? So here I post it. I said, yeah, how do people believe, you know, root word L-I-E, how do people believe that uh, in an infinite universe, how do people believe that in an infinite universe that there is one specific being that created slash controls at all? You know what I mean? And um, the reason why I post that is because that's what a lot of people believe. That's what a lot of people taught to believe. You know what I'm saying? And they they actually think that, yo, there's one, you know, so called um, you know, God created it all and he controls everything and so forth. And I'm like, okay, this is one one being. This is one being and um you know, I'm not understanding how it controls everything. So anyway. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just get into my to my topic. I just see it like this, like boom. If the if the universe is infinite, right? And let's just say, okay, you know, matter of fact, let me um let me read some of the responses. You can see some of the responses here. I'm saying so. Dude, this is real deep too, right here. Uh, Anthony Cruz, man. Anthony Cruz be dropping the jewels. You know what I'm saying? Like God always got some high science to drop, man. You know what I'm saying? Like word. So y'all can see that question there. I mean, y'all can see that that comment there. So let's go back, right? So now, like I said, if the universe is infinite, right? Then tell me where do you get a being within the universe that's supposed to be controlling it all? Because my understanding is that, okay, the universe is infinite, meaning that it has no beginning or ending. So, if you exist in an infinite universe and it has no beginning or ending, then that means that how can anything um, begin anything or how can anything end anything? Another deep concept we gotta understand is that um, we are energy, you know what I'm saying? Everything is energy, you know what I mean? And being that we are energy, energy we know uh, is, Due to the laws of physics, we know that energy can never be created nor destroyed. It can only be recycled or repropagated into a greater or lesser form than its original will. So therefore, when um, when energy exists, it only changes its form. So therefore, we are energy, and therefore that shows and proves that we must have always existed, just that not in this, maybe not in this form, just in different forms. So we know we go through the universal sciences of solid liquids, gases, you know, um, all these things exist. And we know that, 
you know, we have length, width, and depth in the universe. You know what I'm saying? We out here, dog. We out here. You know what I'm saying? In the universe. So we know that. Energy, like I said, can never be created or destroyed. So due to that basic fact, right? Being an energy can never be created or destroyed. And we know that we are energy. That means that we can never be created and we can never be destroyed. Which means to further mean that we don't have it, we, we can never have a creator and we can never have a destroyer. We can only create ourselves and we can only destroy ourselves. You know what I mean? And even, and even that in itself has different levels of understanding to it too because the science is that being that, you know, we only transformed in energy. So we never really technically created ourselves because we always been just in all these different elemental forms. Like the God asked the question, he said, if, 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 if God did exist, then what element on the periodic table does he consist of? You know what I'm saying? So that's a, that's a deep question to ask, you know what I'm saying? We got to go into go into the periodic table because the periodic table we know is mapping out you know all the elements that 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 is known in the universe. And the so-called God, the creator of the universe, doesn't exist or consist of any of these elements, then that means that he doesn't even exist of his own creation. So what is he like? outside of creation see what i'm saying now people say yeah see because he's supernatural that's that's something that's beyond human comprehension see you can't understand that okay well the science is that nothing can technically be beyond human comprehension because everything is in the mind and everything that we think of or fathom or any any type of philosophy of thought that any any man has ever came up with it's all came from the mind. And although we have different thoughts and thought patterns and different, you know, way that we, we see things, it's still all the universal mind. We're all connected to the universal mind. So we got to understand that so-called God is is really is elemental. So I like the way that God brought up that brought up that point about the elements. In the universe because when you break down the word elements or elemental you know say we'll understand that the whole universe is mental or rather i say the whole universe is elemental the word l means god ment means mind and al is a suffix meaning pertaining to so the word l and the e between l and ment is a connected vowel so elemental simply means god ment o or 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 um, God mind pertaining to, or pertaining to the mind of God. So the whole universe is elemental, meaning the whole universe pertains to the mind of God, because the whole universe is manifested by the mind of God, or as the mind of God, because God is the mind, Allah is the mind, Allah is consciousness, we gotta understand. We are our own mind manifested in this physical form. So, like KRS one said, the teacher said, the thoughts that you think are the thoughts that come into your environment. So once we understand the science of our own mind and understand our own consciousness, we'll start to leave this fairy tale stuff alone. You know what I'm saying? You know how you were when you got older, you were conscious enough to realize, like, okay, there's no Santa Claus. Of course there's no Santa Claus. You know, that's ridiculous. That's some, you know, little kids, they believe that when they're little. And, you know, we believe that, but we know that, you know, there's no fat man coming down the chimney. Because, for one, that fat-ass man can't even fit down that slim-ass chimney, for one. You know what I'm saying? And then, two, you know what I'm saying? Would he not die and suffocate and get burned up in the fire and the soot that's in that damn chimney? You know what I'm saying? So, come on, this magical fairy tale story to tell you. And then he comes and you're supposed to leave him milk and cookies and all this, you know, fairy tale superstitious stuff. You know, or, you know, our parents tell us, oh, you know, when your tooth falls out, leave it under your pillow. The tooth fairy, the tooth fairy is going to come and going to leave you, uh, going to leave you, uh, you know, some money, uh, uh, some treasure under the pillow. You know, and as little kids, you know, when we sleep in, our parents sneak in the room and put a, put some change or put a dollar bill or something under the pillow. We'll be like, oh, the tooth, did the tooth fairy, did they actually in the morning, did the tooth fairy visit you last night? We'll be like, yeah, I got a dollar, the tooth fairy came, yeah. 
you know, a little kitty stuff. But as you, even the Bible says, right? As a boy, you played with toys and you did things that a little boy does. But as you got older, you put away those toys and did things that a man does, you know, paraphrasing it. You know what I mean? So, you know, that goes to say that, yeah, man, when you're little, you believe in little fairy tale stuff. But as you get older, your mind matures. You start to deal with, with reality, with science, with mathematics, with, you know, comprehension of universal principles of nature. I mean, you start to step up your whole everything, and it's no longer on that immature or minority state of thinking. So, you know, I, I break it down like this, and we can kill two birds with one stone, because, um, you know, you know how they, they say, you know, well, you know, so-called God was out there, he was in the universe, he was floating in the universe, basically, the way they describe this, this you know, to say, Oh, he was just floating in the universe, and one day he just created the sun, the moon, the stars, and everything, and you know, and blah 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 blah, right? So let's do the knowledge, though, right? Let's just say that I'm I'm this so-called mystery god, right? And I'm floating. I'm just look, look at me. I'm I'm just floating around in the universe, right? Oh, hey, I'm God. Oh, I'm just floating around. Hey, look at all this around me. Wow, this is great. Wow, hey, what am I gonna do? No, you know what? I'm lonely. You know what I'm saying? Let me create some people and stuff like that. And then I'm gonna put them in the garden of Eden. I'm gonna enslave them. And then when they don't do what I tell them to do, I'm gonna curse them. And then I'm gonna have all this trauma and trouble. And then I'm gonna flood the earth and destroy it. And then I'm gonna do this. And then I'm gonna put people back here, repopulate it. And then I'm gonna put them back into all that type of stuff. And, da, da, da. and every time they do something, I get mad and I destroy everything. And da, da, da. so anyway, yeah. So anyway, right? So this this so-called mystery God is floating out in the universe, right? So you know, I say I kill two birds with one stone because we could we could add up the the so-called um, Big Bang theory and the um, and the theory of you know quote unquote God creating the universe, you know, or some kind of singular being creating this infinite existence. So the science is that science is that you can't create a universe. But you can't create the universe, basically. You know what I'm saying? The, the universe, the infinite all in all. You cannot create this. There's no starting point to all this. There's no starting point. There's no starting point. You can't create this. This is that which has always been. And like I say, it simply transforms. You know what I'm saying? Don't the, don't the scriptures see? And I try to, you know, I throw a lot of Bible scriptures out because a lot of our people's mind is caught up in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? But they don't really understand the scriptures that you read it because don't they say you you're not supposed to you um, you're not supposed to think higher than yourself than you ought to. You know what I mean? And all that type of stuff. So so you taught to not even take um take any um you know uh, likeness in your or take any uh, pride in your own intelligence. You know what I'm saying? As if like you can't be smart, you can't be intelligent, you can't know things. And then if you know, if you know more than the average person, then oh, what does this guy think he knows it all? This guy thinks he's a smarty pants or something. Oh, this guy thinks he knows everything. <laughs> no, man. It may just be somebody that put some time into studying some things or more than one thing, and they're well rounded to know a lot of things that you're supposed to know in life. Life. You know, you have life. This is life. It ain't just like, oh, well, you go to school, you go to first, 12th grade, so-called graduate, and then that's the end. And then that's the end of learning. You don't have to read another book ever again. You don't have to go to any type of class. You don't have to study anything ever again. You don't have to use your mind. You don't have to do any kind of homework. You don't have to write, count, you know, basic arithmetic anymore, right? Because you graduated, right? So all, all that, I'm done. Oh, I'm so glad I graduated, man. I hate school. Oh, I'm done with that. So now you just what? Now, now you just don't learn nothing. You just sit around watching TV. You go to work and listen to the instruction from your boss and be a slave. And then you don't increase your intelligence so that you can be creative and maybe create a way to, um, you know, 
feed yourself or or, 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 or take care of yourself as well. You don't have to work for somebody and be a slave. You know what I'm saying? But the science is they keep us caught on the clock 24-7, so we never have no time to think for ourselves and, and be constructive, be productive, and these things like that. You know what I'm saying? Be creative. You know what I mean? They keep us like a hamster on the wheel. You know what I mean? So I tell people to try to strive to get out of that. You know what I'm saying? Get out of that. Come as, as, a, as the scripture says, come out of her. You know what I'm saying? Come out of her. You know what I mean? Stop being bound to this world. You know what I'm saying? Even Jesus said, I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. You know what I'm saying? So just because we're in this world, I mean, we got to be of it. You know what I mean? Just because Housewives in Atlanta is on TV don't mean I got to watch that dumb shit. Just because Jerry Springer is on and they're acting mad ratchet and ghetto and stereotyping fucking black people and white people and just people to just be mad ignorant and do dumb shit don't mean I got to watch that shit. That's because niggas is doing dumb 15 second TikTok attention span shit on, on social media don't mean I got to watch that shit. In fact, that shit makes me angry because I'm like, yo, look at this, man. Look at this waste of intelligence, man. Look at how we just be wasting our intelligence doing dumb, simple, dumb shit, silly shit. And we grow, like I said, we grown as adults, man. But let me let me not dwell on that too much, though, because, you know, whatever, whatever. But anyway, let me get back into the science of what I was saying. So as far as, um, as far as, uh, you know, there being a so-called singular being in the universe to create everything. That cannot happen. You know what I'm saying? Because the universe is infinite. And like I said, you can't create infinity. There's no beginning or ending to infinity. So you can't create infinity. You know what I mean? You can't create something that's infinite. So therefore, all we did was morph out of this universe as like a spun atom, you know what I'm saying? I kept spinning and spinning and spinning and gathering more material and mass and, and gathering itself until it became the sun. And until that sun had an implosion and became the planets and the stars, you know what I'm saying? And those planets gave birth to moons and specifically the planet Earth gave birth to the original black man, original black woman, original black child, black people who populate the whole planet Earth. And we manifest as man, woman, and child a replica as the, of the sun, moon, and star on earth. So as they say, as above, so below. So, you know, um, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know what I'm saying? As above, so below. So and when you say the heavens above, meaning you're referring to the stars or the cosmos. So as it, you know what I mean? So all of that relates, you know what I mean? All of that relates. And we just gotta notice how we are. So like I was saying, so now, Let's say I'm, I'm let's say I'm this mystery guy, right? I'm just floating around in the universe. Oh, I've been here for trillions and millions of years, you know what I'm saying? Then all of a sudden, I just get this 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 ponder, this thought, oh, you know what? Hey, let me create the sun and the planets and stars and stuff and people and all this type of stuff and blah 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 blah. And hey, let me let me do this. You know what I mean? But he himself, like how where did he exist? Like, think about this. Let's say Okay, God, right? He's ready. He's just he's just floating in the middle of space. In that middle of space is already the universe. So he's already in the universe. So how do you now create the universe that already exists? That you're already existing in. Like, see, look at me, look at me right now, right? Let's just say, right? I'm just here. I'm God, right? I'm this mystery God, right? I'm I'm just here in the universe. I'm floating around. Hey, hey, what am I doing? Hey, it's nothing to do. Um, Oh, you know, hey, let me just create some stuff. Oh, you know, matter of fact, let me create the universe itself. Like, but wait a minute. Don't you see? I'm already here. So how can I create that which is already existing? I can't. It already exists. So the only way you could po try or possibly do that is to erase everything here and then put it back and then create it again. But wait a minute. If you erase everything here, guess what you also erase? yourself so that means that you're not gonna be here to put the shit back see what I'm saying so how can you you can't erase the universe and then create it again this ain't no drawing board you know what I'm saying this ain't a piece of paper shit is the universe the infinite universe thus we gotta realize that we always been just in the different elemental forms of the of the elements of the universe 
And as transformations take place, such as what they call a big bang, these elements will transform and 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 mold into something else. So dealing with the sun, the sun was created from hydrogen, uh, hydrogen and helium, protronic and neutronic gas particles. You know what I'm saying? The protons in the in the proton, the protons attracted to the negative in the in the neutron. And being that you got a positive and a negative, a positive and a negative in the neutron, and two positives in the proton, all those three positives dominated that negative. And what it caused was those those because what was happening at first, um, when the protonic and neutronic gas particles were trying to intermingle, they couldn't intermingle because it caused a, a magnetic flux. You know what I'm saying? Um, but due to the constant pressure of them trying to, you know, proceed and proceed and proceed and mental, it eventually broke that magnetic flux giving the protronic and neutronic gas particles a chance to intermingle. And once these gases intermingle, they gave uh, birth to the sun, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Having knowledge of its own creation, knowledge of its own self-transformation, rather I say. You know what I mean? So all of these elements were conscious elements. Like, don't think like when you see the wind blowing or when you see water flowing, that it's not conscious. Water is conscious. Air, oxygen is conscious. You understand? It knows exactly what it's doing and its purpose and everything, and it does it intelligently. You know what I'm saying? Like water knows its cycle. Water knows the, the water knows that the earth knows that, okay, I need to let this water be evaporated by the sun, draw it up into a fine mist that the naked eye can hardly detect, but as this mist ascends higher and increases with other mists of water into the atmosphere until it becomes heavy gravitation, then it distills. Back on our planet in a form of drops of water, drops of ice, depending on how heavy the current was in the form of the event. You know what I'm saying? Build the green one to So we know what makes rain hell so earthquakes. And as we know, in the lessons, we know all the above is caused by who? The Son of Man. So we know that the Sun is the center and the source of the universe, or the solar system, right? I say that's why it's called the solar system. Root word soul meaning sun, solar meaning pertaining to the sun, system, the sun system. The solar system is the sun system. It's the sun system because the sun gave birth to it all, having knowledge of its own self-transformation. You know what I mean? So now, like I said, the so-called mystery God, you can't erase everything and put it back here because, like I said, you got to erase yourself. And once you erase yourself, you won't be here to put everything back that you just erased. So that means that you'll just be wasting, you'll be gone forever, and that that'll be that. So you see what I'm saying? That, that just that that like that concept or logic does not even make any sense. So it just cannot be. So that's why I posted the thing. In an infinite universe, how can people think that one particular or one specific being created or controls it all? Here, yeah. pardon me. Yeah. Yeah, so um, you know, so that's just that's just you know crazy to think though. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you know, when you understand these universal sciences, then you'll know and understand why like that can't be. You know what I'm saying? When you understand the science of how the universe works, you know what I mean. When you understand how everything in the universe works, then you'll be in a, a clearer understanding because, um, like I said, they're teaching us. You know that quote unquote. Now let's get into let's go let's get into this. Right? Let's go into the Bible, right? And this is why they tell you, um, you know, don't mix science with religion. Oh, why do they say that? I mean, isn't science a field of study? You know what I'm saying? And isn't it synonymous with knowledge, which is the accumulation of known facts? So how do you not compare the accumulation of known facts? Or how do you not? apply a field of study religion. But they don't want you to study nothing. They want you to take it as it is and just believe it, hook sink, and that's it. And they just got you. Come on back to the church and hear some more. You know what I'm saying? And they got you. And even if you ain't in the church, 
hooping and hollering, doing backflips, foaming at the mouth, waddling on the floor and all of that, talking about some crazy Jesus. Even if you ain't doing all of that, if you caught up in that Bible as a believer and you're not really reading it as a studier and a knower of things, then you caught up in the story too and you believe the story too. You know what I'm saying? I, whenever I speak about the Bible, I always put disclaimers out there. I always say so-called or quote-unquote or, you know, things like that to let you know that, you know what I mean? I know that the Bible has been mixed, diluted, mixed, diluted, and tampered with in many forms, in many ways. So therefore, we're not reading the original text. Now, if somebody can bring me the original text, if somebody can bring me the first Bible ever written, then I might bear witness to that and I might look more into that than what these things other 20,000 versions that's out there today. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we got to understand. You know what I'm saying? But um, so, 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 now we go into the Bible, right? It says, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? And the earth was without form and void in the face of the deep and it's blah, 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 the spirit of God moved across the face of the sea, all that good stuff, right? Now, it says um, that that was the first day, right? On the first day, he created the heavens and the earth. Now, we know in basic science, we know, we taught in science class, that we know that the, 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 the oh, we know that, man, we know in science class that the sun gave birth to all the planets, you know what I'm saying? And most specifically, you know what I'm saying? The earth, you know what I mean? Is, uh, you know, more specifically, the earth is the most uh, precious planet, the most beautiful, the most resilient, the most uh, resourceful, the most um, everything. She's everything because she gave birth to the black man. She gave birth to God. She gave to physical form of life. On, she gave birth to the life on a physical form, on a physical plane, um, and manifested the light of the sun of man, the, the, the light of the sun in man. You know what I'm saying? So she transferred the sperm of the original man through a portal of her vessel, which was a portal to bring forth life into the universe. So she's like a universal portal, a universal, uh, how you say, uh, vortex, you know what I'm saying, that you go through to come out on the other side. So, you know what I'm saying? Just like you see that you see the story of Ma'at. Ma when you see Ma'at, she's hovering over. And, and that's where they get the Genesis story from, too. You know what I'm saying? You see Ma'at, she's hovering over. Um, and she has the stars in her body. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you know what? Let me let me let me break that down. Let me, I mean, I don't want to make this too long, but yeah, let me get into that science thing and break that down. Because that's where they get the Bible story from anyway, y'all. Pardon me one second. Jeb and Luke. You got you got so many different depictions. I'm trying to get a um a good one, a nice colorful one. Yeah, this is a nice one. This is good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, so, all right, so pardon me, pardon me, pardon me for the break now, excuse me. So, so basically, all right, I'm gonna get into that real fast, but let me, let me break this down though. As far as in the Bible, right? How they say, um, you know, um, in the beginning, you know, God created that. No, let me, let me, let me go get the Bible so I can show. No, no, I'm gonna pull it up for y'all. You know, it's just to show we ain't capping. Ain't no capping over here. You know what I'm saying? Straight action, no capping. Straight knowledge and understanding from the captain. You know what I'm saying. 
All right, so boom, all right, let's share this right here. So basically, I mean, what it says in the Bible is that basically um, God created the heavens and the earth, like the earth was here first, so, so called, right? And then he had made the um, the sun, the moon, he also, and the stars also. But wait a minute, isn't the heaven supposed to be the stars? You know what I'm saying? So if he already made it the stars, then why would he make the stars again? Did he make like two stars? You know what I'm saying? And was there like two beginnings? Because you know there's a beginning in Genesis 1-1, and there's also a beginning in John 1 and 1. Genesis 1 and 1 says, in the beginning, um, God made the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and da-da-da-da. In John 1 and 1, it says in the beginning, the word was with God, the word was God. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So that's like two different um, beginnings right there, you know what I'm saying, as far as what he's dealing with. The one, one is dealing with the earth and the heavens being created, and then another one is dealing with the word um, being God, you know what I'm saying, being with God and the word itself being God. So, like, which one was it? You know what I'm saying? That's two different creation stories in the same, you know, Bible and all that. So, but anyway, um, let me pull this up. But yeah, I man, listen. Y'all y'all read the Bible, goddammit. You know what I'm saying? I ain't about to go through all that, man. Y'all know the stories, man. So basically what I'm trying to say is that if 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 so called God created the heavens and the earth first and the earth was here right like look let's, let's just say that right the earth was just floating around right see the earth the earth is just floating around but we know the earth as well as all the other planets they revolve around the sun you know what i'm saying so being that the earth and other planets revolve around the sun that means that the sun has to be here as the magnetic energy light of energy to uphold these planets in the universe you understand what I'm saying? Oh, but now, and you know, after you break down all the scientific stuff, people want to, oh, but see, but this is God. You know, God can do anything. You know, this, see, this is God, you know? And yeah, yeah, yeah. See what I'm saying? So now, like, 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 whenever you say something about your abilities, oh, because you're just a human, human, right? You know, you got to prove every single thing, right? You know, you know, they got scientific proof for everything in the universe, right? But when it comes to God, oh, well, you know, God is just God. He can do anything. He's just God. Okay, so he does everything. He has no explanation for what he does. He has no scientific proof for what he does. There's no trail you can follow to be like, oh, okay, wow, this is how God did it? Oh, wow, that's what's up. Oh, there is a trail for the Bible. Basic instructions before leaving Earth. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's true. You know, I guess you could say that, you know, pertaining to that theology. But however, how many people actually take heed to the instructions and like i say the instructions get twisted man because in one like for example in one verse they'll tell you um you know in all that gain gain understanding but then in another verse it'll tell you uh, oh and, and, and in proverbs it says that the wise man will will listen and hear and increase in understanding um and then in another verse they'll tell you um but 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 you but but do not don't mean towards your own understanding like so, so what you supposed to do? Are you supposed to get understanding? It says in all thy, in all thy gain, gain understanding. So if understanding, out of everything I'm supposed to gain, if understanding is what I'm supposed to gain, and then when I gain it, I'm not supposed to lean toward it. Then what the hell is the point of me going through everything and trying to find out everything I'm supposed to gain, and then be like, oh, I finally gain understanding, and then be like, but. Now God says, don't lean toward this understanding. Then what the hell, man? Then what am I supposed to do now? What you gonna do now? You know what I mean? You just you lost now. Now you lost. Now you just, well, I got understanding. I mean, you know, I I, I see it, I see it how I see it. I think what I think. I think it's like this. But God says I'm not supposed to lean toward what I think and what I come to understand after I've been searched and in, in the whole universe to gain understanding, and I finally found some understanding. Now I'm not supposed to lean toward this. So then, trust in Him. Trust in you know. See, I see, see the religious game, y'all. So I mean, I'm just saying that you're being taught to deny your own intelligence, and then lead, then lean towards something that doesn't prove its intelligence or doesn't even show 
that he's intelligent in how he does things now knowledge this i know some people out there they're strong believers i'm not trying to attack your beliefs I'm not trying to make you feel some kind of way about what you may believe but what i'm saying is that You have to be a critical thinker. You have to use your brain, your mind, to really understand these things in the universe. So, like I said, for example, you know, if the earth was here before the sun, because it says, and that was the first day, and then on like the third or the uh, or the fourth day, it says that he created the sun. You know what I'm saying? And it says, and that, and that was the fourth day, and he saw that it was good and all that, right? So how do you create the sun after the earth? When we know that it's a sun, see how big, see how big the sun is? I also put this behind me because, um, you know, the name of my organization, the name of my international organization is Lord Messiah, Allah El, universal, you and I verse all, Simple of the of the sun, for the sun, planets, moon, and stars. You know what I'm saying? So um, so that's why I put this symbol in the background too. This is gonna be one of my 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 um, ill platforms that I keep in my background as well when I'm doing um, promos for my international organization. Usually you'll see this um, this 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 background in the, in the back. So yeah, like I was saying, right? So basically, you can't create the earth before you create the sun because the sun created the earth and all the planets and the stars. So. You ain't gonna have no universe without you ain't gonna have no solar system without the soul itself the sun is the soul and we gotta understand that we have souls in our body we have souls or suns stars in our body you know what i mean um it's like i was talking about the um you know not the judgment hall of my eye um dealing with the um shoe jeb and 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 newt Um, so yeah, y'all can see that there, but hold on, let me see. All right, so yeah. Yeah, better so I have it here. Because I was about to put it in my background, but anyway. So yeah, better I have it here. So so y'all can see, right? So now you have Shu, Jet, and, and, and New here. Now, as you can see, you see New here. With the, she's hovering over Shu, right here, and Jeb. Now, dealing with the elements, right? We know now, see, Newt, she's the sky, quote unquote, the sky goddess. You know what I'm saying? The sky, the sky goddess. She represents the stars. And you, as you can see, the stars in her body, meaning she's representing the cosmos. She's representing the canopy above, the quote unquote, the heavens above. The God Shu right here, the God Shu is representing the element of air. Shu, Shu represents the element of air. And then down here you see Jeb, the God Jeb. He represents the element of the earth. You know what I mean? Now, the science is that now, being that you got Jeb representing the earth and you have Newt representing the stars or the, or the quote unquote the heavens and the God Shu is representing the element of air. Doesn't it say in the scriptures how God separated the the the, fir, the, the, the water above the firmaments from the water below the firmaments, and how he basically the firmaments was in between the um the the heavens and the earth. So basically, Shu being the element of air, the firmament simply means a spacious a space a gap of space in between the stars and the earth, and that's what Shu the God Shu that's what he represents. The God Shu he represents that. He represents the element of air. She, uh, Newt represents the stars. You know what I mean? And and Newt is representing the earth, the element of the earth. So you got the element of earth, you got the element of air, and the element of light. You understand what I'm saying? 
And then you also got here, as you see here, you have Kanum, Kanum, the god Kanum. Kanum was the was known as the creator god. It says that Kanum had fashioned me. He, he says Kanum fashioned me. Damn, Kanum fashioned man on the potter's wheel. You know what I'm saying? And that's also where you get the the, the biblical, um, you know, concept of you know God making man in His own image. You know what I'm saying? And also from Kanum fashioning man on the potter's wheel, that's where you get the story of Pinocchio. You know what I'm saying? And and the God um, eternal love, love eternal, the God love eternal. He dropped a jewel. He got some heavy jewels on me. Um, the day. and you know he he breaks it down way better than than I can explain it. You know what I'm saying? But um. You know, he's breaking down to me about the story about Pinocchio and um, the 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 craftsman that 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 made Pinocchio. You know, saying the little boy made out of wood. The 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 history behind it was um, is that that man name was Giuseppe. Giuseppe is Joseph. You know what I'm saying? And if you know the story about Joseph, you know what I'm saying. Um, you know, what I'm saying in the Bible and so forth. Um, so and and the science and, 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 and the science is that um Joseph, Joseph, you know, saying as, as far as you know with Mary, but Joseph with Mary, Joseph did not give birth to so-called Jesus, right? He's supposed to be like immaculate conception, all of that. So, like Joseph didn't necessarily get his image made. So Giuseppe represents Joseph in the sense that, you know, saying Giuseppe wanted to bring himself into um fruition or, or create, recreate himself. And also as far as the story behind Pinocchio, like you know, the story behind Pinocchio says that Giuseppe, he was like, you know. I guess like sterile or older man and he couldn't produce babies or whatever. So he wanted to reproduce himself in the in the craftsmanship of what he called Pinocchio. And the science is that when you deal with the science of uh, um of um because you know Joseph, Joseph was a carpenter. And what do carpenters do? Carpenters, they what? They lay wood, right? You know what I'm saying? As an expression, you know, say as a man, you know, say he lays wood, right? You know what I'm saying? So um, you know, he laid the wood, you know what I mean? Um, so Pinocchio is the science with Pinocchio is that, you know what I'm saying, his, as the more and more that he kept uh, lying and lying, it says that his nose got bigger, you know what I'm saying? And the fact that the reason why his nose got bigger from all those lies is because even though he was lying, he, within all of that, he was still realizing the truth. And, and now he knows, you know what I'm saying? Hence, now he knows. He knows the knowledge and he, you know, his nose, you know what I'm saying? His actual nose got, you know what I'm saying, bigger, you know what I'm saying? Because now he knows, you know what I mean? He knows how to lay the wood, but he also knows that he's not he's not creating anything with this wood that he's laying because he's an inanimate object himself, a playboy, a boy toy, you know what I'm saying? Just like grown men, we out here chasing these women, being a playboy, being a boy toy, you know what I'm saying? We being Pinocchio. Because all we're doing is laying wood and we lying, we running around lying, and all that's happening that's, is our nose is getting bigger. You know what I'm saying? We think our wood is getting longer as we lay in the wood and lying to these women, but our nose is just getting bigger. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, that was a symbolic. And like I said, the God, he break it down way deeper than, way iller than how I just described it. I'm just trying to like remember and recollect what I drew up from him dropping that jewel on me. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that, that's that's a real deep science, though. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, that that his that story of Kanum come that story of Pinocchio comes from um, Kanum. You know what I'm saying? Kanum fashioned man on the potter's wheel. Yes. I'm doing my life. So um yeah so uh. So and see now th and this is the story right now how which about oh this came from the Bible now how does it deal with the Bible right the Bible right see they say that um you know like I said God created they said that so called God separated the heavens from the earth so this is the God shoe the God shoe would be God if anything because he he's as you see he's holding up he's holding up shoe he I mean he's holding up new new uh new as she's representing the stars the heavens. And he's below, uh, standing not on, but you know, standing on level ground as Jeb, which represents the earth. So therefore, he is the god of air, the element of air, Shu, separating the heavens from the earth, separating Nuke from Jeb. You know, saying the heavens from the earth. 
excuse me. Like I said, this is where they get the science from, man. This is where they get all their sciences from, which is our science, you know what I'm saying? Ancient comedic science, ancient African science, you know what I'm saying? Our history, black history, basically, you know what I'm saying? And they just take it and they move out of it. I got a thousand and one um, comedic things I could show y'all as to where they copied all these biblical stories and all kinds of stuff, you know what I'm saying? And and I'm gonna start going through them and breaking them down, you know what I'm saying? Because once you understand these, these sciences of where it came from and know where the actual story really began, then it'll make so much more sense because, um, you know, like I say, uh, now you know the truth, instead of just accepting that the fairy tale stories. You know what I'm saying? So, like I say, if, if we were if we were had enough logic to get older and realize that there's no Santa Claus and no Easter Bunny and no Tooth Fairy and things of that nature, then when we get older, two of the biggest fairy tales we never let go of is a god in the sky. And the devil down in the ground. Oh man. Now, this has been going about for a little minute. Probably been close to about an hour now. So I'm gonna sum this up and I'm gonna leave it off on this last jewel right here, right? So now when you're dealing with uh when you're dealing with uh Heaven and hell, right? People say heaven and hell. Oh, when you die, you're going to go to heaven. When you die, you're going to go to hell. Well, for one, in the old, in the old, that's why people talk about, oh, and that's the Old Testament. Then, like, first of all, don't they say God's word is, is unchanging? You know what I'm saying? So, how are you going to make a difference between the old or the new? You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's the old word of God, right? You're supposed to accept the whole word, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So, help you, God, right? So, don't be, you know what I'm saying? So, don't be picky and choosy now, you know what I'm saying? I be picking and choosing because I know that you have to revise the Bible. You have to uh, see it through the eyes of your higher consciousness. Now that you have knowledge yourself and now that you know better, now that you understand universal sciences, now you can go back and reinterpret these mythological stories and see the universal principles and universal allegories within them. Because that's really what it what what it what it is is that it has principles and allegories within the stories, you know what I'm saying? But for some people, they had to be given a a mythological story to get them to understand, you know, real deep concepts. You know what I'm saying? But there's real deep concepts behind all these mythological stories, just as far as like Jesus dying on the cross, dying for three days and being resurrected. That's the winter solstice. The sun resides in the, in, the, in the lowest point in the sky for three days. It leaves a shadow on the earth for three days. And then on the uh, from December 22nd, uh, 23rd, 24th, and then on December 25th, the sun rises one degree, bringing back light to the earth. And that was symbolic to the ancient people as a resurrection of the sun. You know what I mean? And this happens every year. It's called the winter solstice. Look it up. It's called the winter solstice. But... Let the Bible tell you, they'll tell you, oh, no, Jesus, he died on a cross. He was dead for three days, and then he came back to life, and then he ascended up in the sky to the heavens. No, what really took place is that the sun, like I say, resides for three days in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a darkness, so to speak. Or rather, I say it, it perceivably on the earth, it seems like there's a shadow for three days, and then the sun rises one degree, bringing back light to the earth. And then every day there on, it rises and rises and rises, bringing back longer days. That's why you got the equinoxes and all of that, you know, the longer days and shorter days and all of that. And da, 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 da. That's all universal science. You know what I'm saying? That's all universal science. And it's all based upon mathematics. So it has a perfect format. So we got to understand that the universal creator, which is the mind, is highly intelligent. You understand? And once you get your mind in tune with the with the high intelligence known as the universe, then you'll start to um, connect with those high frequency waves of the universe, and you'll start to raise your mentality and raise your vibration and raise your consciousness and become smarter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just just simply like to put it on a simple level, you'll become smarter. You know what I'm saying? You'll become more intelligent. See, being smart is just being smart is just like oh. Oh shit, he's smart. He knows how to he oh smart. you know he knows how to do stuff. He's he's smart. But intelligence is how is the workings of the mind, how the mind works. You know what I'm saying? So to be intelligent means like you know how to use your mind 
in multiple situations to to uh to master all situations because the mind is the master. You know what I'm saying? You got 12 steps on a pyramid. Just like you go through first to 12th grade. And then you take a little time off, just like you look on a pyramid of dollar bill, take a little time off. That little time off represents that hiatus between the 12th step on the pyramid and the capstone. And that capstone is a 13th step, just like when you go to college, which would be like the 13th level, 13th grade, you can get what's called a what degree? A master's degree. And when you get a master's degree, you're qualified to teach from first to 12th grade. See how that works? And guess what the 13th letter of the alphabet is, y'all? M, which is in the supreme alphabet, master. See how that works? Mathematics never lies. You know what I mean? So, yeah, so, so like, that's real, you know what I mean? So, yeah, so, so like I'm saying, right, heaven and hell, right? So let me, let, me, let me wrap that up. So now, they tell you, right, heaven is supposed to be up in the sky, and, and Jesus told you heaven is not in the sky. He said, he said in, in, in Luke um, 17 and 21, when the disciples was asking Jesus, where are we going to see the coming of the kingdom of heaven? He said, it's not going to be a place that you observe with your physical eyes. You're not going to be able to say here nor there, hither nor, nor thither. He said, for the kingdom of God, or in some version it says the kingdom of heaven, is within you. So if the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is within you, then obviously the power or the, or the, or the greatness or the light and all that is within you, not outside of you. So why are people praying outside? And don't they say also that the spirit of God dwells within? You know what I'm saying? The spirit of God is inside of you. And if, and if God is a spirit and He's in, and it's inside of you, then why are we looking outside of ourselves to find God when we're supposed to be looking inside of ourselves? See what I'm saying? Because we've been taught to not think so highly of ourselves. Oh, y'all see how, how, I'm, how I'm standing in the sun right now? I'm looking like Jesus. You know how even put Jesus in the, with the sun behind his head and all that? Nah, but it's the God, Lord Messiah, in the flesh, the true and living God. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, so, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so yeah, you know, it's like mathematics never lies. So now, like I said, so now, you know, heaven and hell right now. Let's deal with let's deal with, with the concept of heaven. Like I was saying, it's an infinite universe, right? So if you were to go a million, gazillion, trillion, billion, billion, million, billion, billion, blah, 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 miles in the sky, right? Guess what? You would never reach a corner, a ceiling, a, 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 a floor, or anything like that. There's no corner. This this kid dropped a jewel on me a long time ago, like like 15 years ago. He said there's no corners in the universe. He's talking about the universal shit. He said there's no corners in the universe. I was like, wow, that's deep. Ooh, something so simple but so deep. Like, think about that. In the universe, in the in the infinite space, there is no there's no such thing as a corner. And the reason why there's no corner, because a corner is where like two walls meet, you know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying like to, to make a corner, right? So, or two streets or two lanes or two whatever. So in the universe, there's 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 no in the infinite spacious space, there's no there's no corners, which means that there's no walls. And there's no walls means there's no ceiling, there's no floors, there's no walls, there's no none of that. So that means that you can't put the universe in a box. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can never, you can never encapsulate infinity. You know what I'm saying? So due to the fact that you could never encapsulate infinity, you know what I'm saying? Everything is openly infinite. And it will always be infinite and open and 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 ever 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 all that you know what I'm saying? So yeah, there will never be a beginning or an end. You know what I'm saying? The only beginning is the beginning which you begin, and the only end is the end which you end. You know what I'm saying? And as it says, as it is in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. So so just as you were, whatever form of energy you were in the beginning, so shall you be in the end. So hence, from ash to ashes, dust to dust, right? You know, when we break down, when we so-called die, we plant it back into the earth, right? The earth breaks down the elements, and that's why, you know, I don't want to be buried with a casket. Put me put me straight in the earth and let the earth eat me up in the worms and, and, and whatever and let me be fertilizer to the earth and go back to Mother Earth where I came from, you know what I'm saying? Because, um, you know, you go back to your essence of where you came from. You know what I'm saying? Don't put me in a casket to trap my soul. And don't put me in the earth 
it don't, it don't, it don't, and let me be in the earth so my my flesh could go back to which it came from. You know what I'm saying? And let my and let my consciousness or my so-called soul let that vibrant energy go back into the spacious universe from which it came. You know what I'm saying? Don't trap me inside no damn casket and shit. You know what I'm saying? Fuck all that. I don't want to be in no casket. You know what I'm saying? Because all we do is just evaporate back into the universe. Remember, ghost face like, word is bomb, God, fuck around and get evaporated. You know what I'm saying? Word is bomb, God, fuck around and get evaporated. Sit back to the essence. You know what I'm saying? Word is bomb. So, like, yeah, you know, like, we simply, that's all we do. We simply go back to that which we came. All right, so now, so the concept of heaven and hell, right? Let me finish this up. Concept of heaven and hell. So now they say, like I said, you could go a million, gazillion, trillion, million, million, million miles in the sky and you'll never, because it's so infinite. So when people say, oh, heaven is in the sky, like where? Where? Exactly where? Because when you finally so-called locate heaven, guess what? There's going to be something above that, and then something above that, and then something above that, and then something above that, and so forth and so forth and so forth. So you're never going to reach a so-called place or a specific dimension where oh this is heaven this is where it all started like no it's, there's no such place only heaven or higher self is that which is within you in which you seek to rise to your higher self and only hell is the hell within you your lower self you know what I'm saying which when you destroy and you go to your lower self and you at your lowest point when you're at your highest point you at your heaven the lowest point is your hell Heaven and hell is a state of mind, and since the mind manifests into the physical, it becomes a physical living condition. So as a man, even Jesus said, as a man thinketh, so is he. And I would say, as a woman thinketh, so is she. It's the same thing. So the way you think about yourself is the thoughts that, the thoughts you think. KRS once said the thoughts you think are the thoughts that come into your environment. So it's all based upon your mentality, how you think. You know what I'm saying? How you think. You know what I mean? You got to, you know, and, and, and what you think on is based upon the knowledge that you have, because you can only think about what you know. You know what I'm saying? You can only speak on, and people should only speak on what they know, instead of speaking on a whole bunch of shit they don't even know nothing about. Motherfuckers just be talking about a whole bunch of shit, don't even know what the fuck they talking about. They can just be talking. You know what I'm saying? But you should know what you're talking about, you know say Knowledge your wisdom, you know what I mean? So, yeah. And now dealing with the science of, 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 of hell, right? Because being that the universe is infinite, you can't put no dimension or space or, or exact measurement to try to say, okay, well, this approximately is how high heaven is because, you know, like I said, it's infinite. So how are you ever going to say where? Oh, and another thing too, right? When, when, when people be pointing up, you're like, you know, heaven, you know, heaven in the sky, right? and they point up to the sky, right? Knowledge this, like I said, once again, not trying to just just use your critical brain and think this, right? The earth spins on an axis, right? It also revolves around the sun, and as it's revolving around the sun, it's also spinning on an axis. So now we going like this, right? So like as you pointing up, up, up is going like this, as it's going around um, the sun, right? Yearly, and let's say that we hold up our hand, like you know, just. You know, you can't really do that, but, you know, your arm gets tired. But let's say you held your hand up the whole year round, like you pointed up to the sky the whole year round, and, and the earth went through all 12 or 13 constellations, and it came all the way back around, you know what I'm saying? Don't you know that your, your up was pointing at the Pisces constellation, then it was pointing at Aquarius, then it was pointing at this and that and that and, that and all these different places? So which one of these places exactly is heaven? And then on top of that, you got to acknowledge this. The Earth is also spinning on its axis. So now, as it's spinning on its axis, just let's just say in a 24-hour day, let's just say, yo, my God is in heaven. He's he's up, right? If you point up, right? And let's just say you hold your hand, your, your arm up. Okay, you hold your hand up, right? And let's just say it's 12 o'clock. Don't you know at three at 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 three o'clock, your 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 up is going to be like this, and at six o'clock it's going to be like that, and at nine o'clock it's going to be like that, and at 12 o'clock it's going to come back like that. Because the earth is spinning, you know what I'm saying? So as you holding your your hand up in one position, as if as if like it's straight up and it's one specific place, that 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 place you point into is rotating. You know what I'm saying? It's rotating in a 24-hour span, and then that that up is also as it's rotating like that, 
it's also going around as it's rotating as far as the year round is concerned. So at any time during the year, you point up in the sky, exactly where is that? Because if that's supposed to line up exactly to where heaven is, then please jump in a NASA spaceship and fly up there and be like, oh, I caught it. There it is. There it is. Oh, we got it. Yo, heaven. Oh, finally, we got it. Oh, there it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Let's. Let's be real. Let's be logical. But wait a minute. Am I leaning toward my own understanding? Oh, see, I'm not supposed to do this because the, the, the God said don't do that. So, so yeah. So I guess all of this I said in this whole thing, I guess it's just all, you know, it's just my own understanding. And, you know, I'm not supposed to lean toward that. I guess I'm just supposed to leave that, um, you know, everything is fairy tales and Whatever God wants to do, he can do it because he's God and he's just some kind of fairy tale magician who does this miraculous poof pow pull a rabbit out of a hat type of stuff. But meanwhile, man, who we say, oh, man is just puny man. Man is very intelligent, highly intelligent. We create all kinds of shit. We create the Internet. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We can, we, can, we can find sources to anything in the damn universe on the Internet. You know what I'm saying? But we can't find God. You know what I'm saying? God don't want to reveal himself. He's every time he shows himself, he hides behind clouds and stuff. And he's like, Oh, no one can see my face. I just want to give you these instructions. Go down there, my son, and do this. And come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, really, man? Really? 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 <laughs> like, oh, I just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying in the logical mind you know what i'm saying please don't be mad at me don't be mad at me because i have a different point of view because i see things differently please don't be mad at me but a lot of times maybe you should not be mad at yourself but maybe just reconsider your own train of thought and what you may have just been taught or what you may just happen to believe and maybe just reconsider the, or reanalyze the things that you believe you know what i'm saying to use just logic and common sense to be like, yo, is this really, really real, like logical, like by real logic, you know, is that real? Or is it just something that I believe in? Because, you know, from little, this is what I was taught. And, you know, my grandmama, you know, she raised me up in the church. You know, she brought me in the church. She told me Jesus loved me. And, you know, and, 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 she, and she told me to be good. And every time I was good, in the name of Jesus, she would bless me and give me quarters so I could go play the arcade. And I was a good boy. And I was, you know, and all of that. And. I mean, I, hey, I ain't mad at you. If that's your motivation, if that's what keeps you, if that's your form of righteousness, if that's what keeps you on a straight and arrow, then, you know, more power to you. You know what I'm saying? But I just say, you know, as, as adults, some of some of the fairy tale stuff of the Bible and, you know, religious stories, we just got to be more real about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we know Jonah and the whale. We know ain't no man going to survive three days inside the belly of a whale. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. But he was he had God with him and, you know, and all that. So come on now. You know, just just logical. You know, the acid inside the belly of the whale would have ate his ass up like he would not have came back out properly. And on top of that, how does he breathe for three days inside the belly of a whale? You know, when they, when they show the little cartoon things on TV, where they show for little kids, they make it seem like he was just in there chilling. This nigga lit up a, a lamp and shit. He struck a match up inside the belly of the whale and shit. You know what I'm saying? So he could see around. I'm like, come on, man. Like, that ain't real. That ain't no belly whale. The whale of a belly like that. The belly of a whale like that. Like, come on, man. Like, but anyway, you know, these are fairy, these are stories, fairy tale stories. That as we get older, we should be, we should know better. That's all I'm saying. We should know better. We should know better. So. so um, so all right. So now dealing with the concept of hell, right? Now this right here, we can use dimensions because this is supposed to be physical, right? They say that hell is supposed to be in the pit of the earth, right? It's inside the earth. When you die, you're going to go down in the ground and burn in hell. You know what I'm saying? You're going to go, you go down and burn in hell. You're going to burn in the fire and the brimstone. And the devil's going to go and get you. Mm-hmm. You're going you to go to hell. Keep on talking like that. You don't believe in God. You're going to go to hell. Mm-hmm. You're going to go. 
For real? I mean, what, what, isn't God supposed to be all understanding? I mean, damn, he didn't give me no kind of instruction or or or, or proper instruction because, you know, according to him, just everything just happens just because he is who he is. And, um, you know, is, is he going to be mad at me that I didn't understand things? Because you know, how, how, how Kend Kendrick Lamar said, Lord, forgive me things I don't understand. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, yo. I, you know, if you ain't gave the people no understanding, and then you said they're not even supposed to lean toward their own understanding, that means the people are having a lack of understanding. And then you also said that the people perish due to a lack of knowledge. And because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject you, Hosea 4 and 6. And because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject your children to come. So goddamn, that goes to show that because you reject knowledge, you're going gonna to reject you and your kids to come. So that goes to show that the lack of knowledge is, a, is, is ignorance, right? So ignorance is a generational curse. Due to our lack of knowledge, this is why we are, you know, quote unquote. And and, 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 and and that would make sense, though. I could bear witness to that, though, just in general. Any people, due to a lack of knowledge, you would be cursing yourself to be in ignorance because you don't know the things that you should know in life. And there's no reason why you, you, you cannot know these things. Once again, like I said, people, you have the mind of God. You have the intelligence. You have universal intelligence. And you have the Internet. You know what I'm saying? So, like, there's no excuse why you shouldn't know anything you need to know. You can fucking Google any damn thing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, but good night, say everything Google's right. Okay, maybe in a milligram of a whatever, da, 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 that may be true. Because what we got to understand about Google, and I, you know, I used to say that ignorantly too, but understand about Google and Wikipedia and things of that nature is that. Now, 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 in Wikipedia, they might throw their own little personal slander of certain things. Like, for example, I was reading about Noble Drew Ali, and they said he used the unscientific premise that African Americans are descendants of Morocco. And do, what do you mean, unscientific? What do you mean? Like, I took that unshit out of there. Scientific premise that da 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 da. da. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? But anyway, um, so yeah. So, you know, yeah, yeah, they, they might, but, but basically what Google and Wikipedia does is they, they, they get their information from other sources as well, competent sources as well, which you can, call, that's why they put all the links and the stuff at the bottom to where they got the information so you can cross-reference it and look it up for yourself. It's not just what Google say. Google and Wikipedia get their information from other sources. So when you actually look up and click those links at the bottom and look up those sources and actually do what you call research, then you'll find out that you're only... Re means to do again. Search means to, to find or to look for. So you're only looking for it again. That's all you're doing. But people don't want to do that because they're lazy. Man, I don't want to look for all of that, man. I ain't going to look that up. Oh, man. Oh. So, well, whatever, man. And that's your laziness. And due to your laziness and your ignorance, you're perishing due to that lack of knowledge. And it's as simple as that. I ain't making no more excuses for nobody, man, especially grown-ass people, grown adults. They ain't got no excuse, man, because if you choose to sit around and watch dumb shit on the tell lie vision and let them tell lies to your vision instead of you going and researching using your own intelligent mind and putting vital information into your brain to help you grow and develop in life, then that's, your, that's strictly solely on you. We can't say it's the white man. I don't want to hear that shit nowadays. Because every, every community got a local library, even if you ain't got a computer at home, you got a local library, which is free. You can go on there for hours every day and just study, 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 and gain mad knowledge and information and put that shit in your brain. Write down notes and all of that. Send shit to your email, save the information, do all of that. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so stop it, man. I'm tired of people, man, not having high science information. Not saying you got to be a damn scientist, but god damn, man. You're supposed to know more than these goddamn fairy tales we've been taught. You know what I'm saying? As grown men and women, we're supposed to know more than fairy tales. So anyway, let me finish with this last fairy tale because this is the one that people majorly fear. They think they're going to go to hell when they die. Well, anyway. Oh, doesn't it say that, um, well, actually, I, I guess I guess if, if to you, hell, uh, hell means the absence of God, then I guess you are going to be in hell when you die because the Bible says God is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. 
So all you people that believe, oh, when I die, I'm going to be with God in heaven. I'm going to be with the creator. I'm going to be with Jesus. I'm going to, no, you're not. Not according to that very Bible that you read. It says God is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. So when you're dead, God is not your God anymore. He's only your God when you're living. So that means that God is a, is a living, alive factor of life. You have to be alive to experience God in any type of form. You know what I'm saying? You have to be alive. So if you're dead, guess what? No more God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're, you're dead. So that's why the best and the highest way you can manifest God is to know that you are God and manifest on a high science of being a God. You know what I'm saying? A supreme being, meaning you are manifesting the highest state of your, your existence. Simple, you know what I'm saying? You know, oh yeah, so, all right now, so-called hell, right? So when you die, people think they're going to go to hell when they die and all of that, right? So you're going to go down on the ground and you're going to die, right? So, all right, now, now let's just right. We're going to use mathematics, basic mathematics. The diameter of the planet Earth, the diameter, is 7,926 miles. Half of the diameter the radi is the radius, and half of 7,926 Six miles is 3,963 miles, approximately 4,000 miles. So let's just round it off. Let's say approximately 4,000 miles. We're going to use our approximation. So now, that means that that's, that's half of it. So that means that if you get to the core of the earth from the surface and you were to go down into the core of the earth, it would be 3,690. Uh, Pardon me, 3,963 3, miles to the core of the earth. So that, that's approximately 4,000 miles. So now, excuse me. And I got this jewel from um, the brother, I don't know if it was brother Kevin Muhammad, but one of the Nation Islam brothers, he was breaking this down, man. But, you know, and, you know, basically that, you know what I'm saying? We know that the earth is 93 million miles away from the sun. And the sun is so hot. Like today it was mad hot. So I got the thing on my neck, man, with the cold water on it. It's mad hot. So um, the sun is 93 million miles away from the earth. Or the earth is 93 million miles away from the sun, like I said. Because the sun is the center and all the plants came from the sun, as you can see. Um, so due to that fact, right, 93 million miles away, we can feel the heat of the sun is so hot. Like like Ray Hagen said on, on, on a hot summer day, you can cook an egg on the on the hood of a car on a hot summer day. You know what I'm saying? That's how hot the sun be. You know what I'm saying? So now if the sun is so hot from 93 million miles away, and then people believe that there's supposed to be some kind of hell, some fire, some fire burning inside the earth, and this fire is supposed to be so hot, it's hotter than the sun. This this is so you gonna burn it in a fiery and a hot ass fire. This shit is burning hot. You know what I'm saying? Like this shit is just smoking hot. God damn, this you ain't never experienced nothing hotter than this. The temperature of this shit is like beyond hot. You know what I'm saying? So now, if that were the case, if there was something inside the earth that's hotter than the sun itself, and we know that the earth revolves around the sun, if there was something, and plus we got to understand that the, 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 the so-called lava or whatever that inner material that's in the earth is simply but a, a, a baby star inside the earth, showing and proving that the black man is the sun, the black woman is the earth, the sun plants its seed in the earth to give birth, you know what I'm saying, that's, that's why man came from the earth, you know what I'm saying? Um, with that solar energy radiating through us, we came through the portal of the black woman, the earth. And now, just like, you know, we have babies, the man plants a seed in the, the earth. He transfers that, transports that seed through the vital, through the, uh, the vortex, the, uh, the womb of the black woman and brings forth life. So think about how powerful the black woman is, how she's able to do that. You know what I'm saying? Yes, we have power in the seed and we plant the seed, but look at the process of what the black woman does. So like, wow, you mean to tell me that's not the same thing the earth does? Yes, it is. It's the very same thing that the earth does. This is why the woman is the earth. It's just that simple. You are the sun. 
That's not a man. It's just that simple. If you want to be something else, then all right, whatever, be something else. Wait on aliens and talk about all this mysterious stuff that you can't prove instead of using your own goddamn brain and just being a supreme being because you know you can prove that. But no, because you want to be a lazy, unproductive being on the planet and you want to leave everything in God's hands. No, I'm waiting on God, I'm waiting on Jesus, I'm waiting on God. No, man, do for yourself. God said God helps those who help themselves, right? So if you talk about you waiting on God to help you, God ain't gonna help you unless you help yourself. According to that, that theology, that that you know, whatever, you gotta help yourself. You know what I mean? As far as people waiting on Jesus or Yash Yasha Allah, Yasha Allah, Allah, however you want to say it. Even Jesus said, There shall be a holy a holy spirit, a comforter. A Holy Spirit that will come to teach you um, all things of this world, even to remind you of things that I have said. This is Jesus speaking about somebody else or someone or something else, which he said was the Holy Spirit or the Comforter, which is supposed to come and teach you not even what he taught you, but even more things, all the things of the, of the world. So that means that Jesus obviously didn't teach us all the things of the world. If somebody or something else is coming to teach us all the things of the world, and even some of the things, and remind us of what Jesus even, even said. And that also goes to show you that if this comforter is coming to, to remind us of what Jesus said, that means that Jesus, as he said, he didn't come to change the law, he come to fulfill the law. That means that he didn't completely fulfill the law because we're still waiting on the Holy Spirit or the comforter to really fulfill the law, so, so to speak, right? So... I'm just here to comfort you. Please don't be mad at me. Don't be mad at me. I'm just here to give you the information that the same thing Jesus was telling you. He told you, and I have said, yea, our gods, and all of you, not just Jesus, all of you, not just Adam, all of you, not just Abraham, Isaac, or, or whatever, all of you are children of the Most High. This is Jesus' words himself. He's telling me, he's saying this. And before that, in, in Psalms 82, in one, he says, God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. Gods. He judges among the gods. So like I said, now, once again, when they talk about my concept on, on the page, where I said, um, if how can people think that God is a singular being? Even in the Bible, it tells you God ain't a singular being. And, and it says that he stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. So there are other gods that are equal to him that he judges among. And he stands in a congregation of them as they are mighty. So y'all don't understand that? Y'all don't hear that? I guess y'all over y'all skipped over that, right? Y'all didn't get that? Y'all missed that? Okay, let's go back to Genesis 126. And God said, Let us make man in our image. After our likeness, us and our are plural, not singular. Once again, so not only does God stand in the congregation of the mighty and judges among the gods, he also has us and our, and now people are going to say, oh, that was Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Some people say, oh, that was the angels or whatever, whatever they want to say. You know what I mean? But anyway. No, it couldn't have been the angels or da, da, da. it had to have been the gods because once again, it says, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So that means that there's more than one image and more than one likeness. You know what I'm saying? And it also says, male and female made he them. So that goes to show you that there's a masculine and a feminine aspect of divinity. See what I'm saying? So when, so, you know, just speaking on the story, you know what I mean? Just entertaining the story. So when so-called Eve had eaten of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, it says, behold, for the man has be, and then she gave it to Adam, it says, behold, for the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. Remember, the serpent had told him, 
in the day that you eat of that, you won't surely die. Your eye, God knows that. God doth know that in the day that you eat it of the fruit, your eyes, your eyes will be open, and you will know good. And, you will be like one of the gods to know good and evil. So basically, to be a god simply means, according to the Bible, simply means to know, have knowledge of good and evil, to know right from wrong, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Or, and, and really, not even necessarily to know right from wrong, but to know right and wrong, to know good and evil. Not necessarily a differentiation between the two, but just to have knowledge of the two. See what I'm saying? So that's why, you know, who's to say whether Eve, according to the story, who's to say whether she was wrong for eating of the fruit? Was it, wasn't God trying to deny them the knowledge and keep their eyes closed, but yet he had Adam tilling the land? He was working like a slave, but he couldn't get no knowledge. And if he tried to get knowledge, there was a death penalty. Hmm. Doesn't that sound similar to the slave plantation where we was picking cotton and picking peas and picking whatever and working the land, but yet we couldn't learn how to read or write or get any kind of knowledge? And if we did, oh, man, boy, you about to get hung from that tree. You about to get yourself killed. There was a death penalty for gaining knowledge. So where did they get that from? Hmm. Did they learn it from the Bible? And did they use the very Bible to enslave us? Hmm, wow. Well, I never put two and two together like that. I never thought about it like that. Oh, wow. So is that to say that God was the first slave master? Wow. Is this is why slavery justified all throughout the Bible and the Quran? Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, now I get it. Oh. Now it's just starting to make sense now. I think I get it. Oh. So if you want to know why people are enslaved by religion, because the religion itself is a is a form of slavery. It's what it was designed to be. Or what it or what it has been altered to be. That's why we're talking about. You know, if somebody could bring me the original text of the Bible, I will study that from sun up to sun down to see the truths and the knowledge in that. Because the versions we got now have been mixed, diluted, and tampered with over many, many years. There's so many different versions of, of the Bible. And the word holy means not mixed, diluted, or tampered with in any form. And book means book. So that means that it's supposed to be a book that has but not been mixed, diluted, or tampered with in any form. But once it says holy Bible, King James Version, New International Version, such and such version, now it's no longer holy because obviously to make it their own version, they had to mix, dilute, and tamper with it to make it their own version. So now it's no longer holy because it's been mixed, diluted, and tampered with. You understand? See how simple that is? So, you know what I mean? So bring me the original text because as far as I'm concerned, I am the original text. I was here long before any book was ever written or created. No baby was ever born with a Bible strapped to their butt, like, oh shit, this is my this is my basic instructions before leaving Earth. Oh, thanks, mama. This came out your pussy with me, along with me. It was attached to me like a umbilical cord. Oh, thank you, mama. Like, or thank you, God, he gave me this umbilical cord with, 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 a, with a Bible attached to it. Oh shit. Shit got Wi-Fi to it too. Oh shit, this is official. Like. Come on, man. No, that, that never happened. You know what I'm saying? So, all right. So I was supposed to finish this about an hour. I went on a whole nother half hour going on about some other stuff, man. But for those who actually watch this, you know how much information you get, man? You know how many jewels I just dropped, man? It may not be what you agree with or what you've been taught or how you've been told to see things. But I'm just trying to give you a different perspective. Use your logical mind. Use your common sense. Use your brain. Don't be afraid to think for yourself. When you stop thinking for yourself, guess what? Someone else is thinking for you. That's all I'm saying, right? So if you go from, from the surface of the earth to the center, right, uh, it would be approximately 4,000 miles. So like I said, if we could feel the heat of the sun 93 million miles away, and it'd be so hot, why don't we, and, and hell is supposed to be hotter than the sun, then we should feel the heat from hell 
on the soles of our feet. We should we should be like on a hot on a. We should be like, God damn, it's so hot, man. The devil must be mad today. Damn, it's so hot, man. Hell is hot down there. I can't even walk on the earth because it's so damn hot. So how could that be? You know what I'm saying? It's just like common sense. You know what I'm saying? That's that just doesn't exist, man. It's not real. And on top of that, like I said, if there was something inside the earth that were hotter than the sun itself, then the earth would burn from the inside out. You know what I'm saying? Or, or more so, there would be a star or some kind of um, energy in the earth more magnetic or hotter than the sun, then maybe the planets would revolve around the earth. And we already know years ago they didn't disprove that theory. You know, oh, no, the planet, maybe, the, maybe the planet, maybe the, the earth is the center of the universe. Like, really? Come on, man. Really? But according to the Bible, they say God made the heavens and the earth first. So maybe you would think that. You know what I'm saying? And they say later on he made the sun. So maybe you would think that according to the Bible. But this is why they say don't mix science with religion because science would shut down religion. It would be like, yo, this can't be B. This is this is so um, this is so uh, fake. And think about it too, right? It says that in the first day after he made the heavens and the earth, it says in the in the evening, in the the morning, in the evening, or whatever uh, uh, was was the first day, right? So if you made a if you said the morning and the evening or whatever, you made a differentiation between the night and the day. You know what I'm saying? And the only way you know the night and the day is by the sun. So if the sun wasn't even here yet for you to measure what a what days are. And don't give me that a day to God is a thousand years stuff, because we ain't even talk about that right now in this concept. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know what? And even if you, and even if you do, it, 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 it wouldn't matter the, the amount of time. It's like what happens, the process, you know what I'm saying, still. So, um, you know, you, 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 you can't create... Um, you know, saying so they say to say, oh, yeah, so, so in other words, so, 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 so was there two sons, you know what I'm saying? Because, um, yeah, like, see, that's why I got to go to the scripture to pull this up, man, and read this exactly. Because if you read it, it's basically like it's saying, like, he created two suns, as if, like, he made two, two, you know, stars and stuff like that, two suns. Let's pull this up. All right, so um, ah. so all right, so in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse one, and the earth was without form and darkness, and uh, was without form and void, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, "Now, boom, right, peak, right. This is still in the first day." And God said, let there be light, and there was light, right? Now, this is on the first day, right? First day, he already said, let there be light. Now, we know the light he's talking, we know the light is the sun, right? And God said, and God saw the light, and and beat, and, 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 right? Not, and he acknowledged it, and he saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. So now he was now that shows you that he was able to differentiate light from dark, night from day, right? On the first day. And he said, let there be light, right? And God called the light day. See, God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. See how that just explained that? And the evening and the morning were the first day. See, you heard that in the evening and the morning for the first day. So all of that right there is supposed to have happened on the first day. Or if you want to say a day to God is a thousand years. So the first thousand years, all of that took place right there, right? Now, then it goes on to say, um, verse 6, And God said, Let there be a, fir a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let, let it divide the waters from the, from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it, and, and it was so. Uh, and God called the firmament heaven. Now, part of self. 
before I said the firmament was like the open space. But being that they say saying the waters above the water, the firmament, the waters above the firmament and the waters below the firmament, then maybe the firmament they talk about is like like a firm, like a garden, like like a land, you know what I'm saying? Like 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 um, you know, grooves of land, you know, islands of land or whatever the case may be. Um, so maybe they talk about land in this in this particular um 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 breakdown. And you know, saying so the waters from above the water and all right. Uh, from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so and God called the firmament heaven so if the firmament was the was between the waters it was between water land and he called the firmament heaven that means that he called the land heaven heaven on earth y'all peep that nah y'all didn't peep that right y'all didn't peep y'all y'all overlooked that right there that that, that missed y'all y'all missed that I guess y'all missed that right all right so anyway, um, all right, and, and it was so. And God called from heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Now, that was on the second day, right? Now, this is down. Now we're going in. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together uh, onto, the water, uh, onto one place and let the dry land appear. See, that's what I was talking about. Let the dry land appear. And it was so. So that dry land was the firmament. And he said he called the firmament heaven. So the dry land was heaven, not a place up in the sky. See, this is Genesis telling you the beginning and the beginning. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end, right? So when the Lord prayer says, Abbot, um, um, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because the earth is the heaven. They tell you, they make you think heaven is somewhere else. And like Jesus said, heaven is within you. So it's going to be on earth as it is within you. You know what I mean? Because what you express is your will. Like they said, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So everything that's within you, in your heart, in your mind, in your consciousness, in your soul, to express through your will, that's what becomes That's what becomes uh, your uh, your will being done on earth as it is in heaven. So on the outside as it is within. See how simple that was? You know what I'm saying? But, you know, if you want to get spooky with it and all mysterious and no, see, that don't mean that. See, you're leaning towards your own understanding. See, and then... Am I not cross-referencing all these scriptures? I'm not going outside the Bible paradigm. I'm not going into scientific, mathematical stuff and all of that right now. I'm staying within the within the scriptures. And that's what it says. So anyway, and God called, see, look, and God called the dry land earth. Now, before he said he called the dry land, which was the firmament heaven, and now it says he called it earth. So he referred to the same earth as heaven, heaven on earth. Earth is heaven. The black woman, the, they say, Dr. Ben said, heaven is between the legs of the black woman. And that's not to be derogatory. Um, that's, that's to be real. Because that's where God is born. Through the legs of the black woman. Because she is the earth. That's where heaven is. So if God lives in heaven, God lives on the earth. God lives with a woman. You know what I'm saying? And it was so, right? And God called the dry land earth and gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God called that it was, and God saw that it was good, right? Okay. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and yielding seeds and da 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 Okay, and uh, now let me not that out because you know okay. that. You talk about the, the talk about the earth, talk about the woman. Let me not skip over her the, her process. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. So, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb uh, yielding seeds and fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind. So every fruit has a seed in it, so therefore it's able to reproduce. Hence the fruitfulness of the woman. And then, and 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 and. and, 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 and 
quote unquote, God instruct man to be fruitful and multiply. So now when it comes to that concept, we know that women outnumber men on the planet. So, and, and, and if every one man had one woman, there would still be billions of women left over with, with, with no man. So that goes to show you that man has a, not a pleasure, but more so a, a responsibility of dealing with more than one woman and taking care of more than one woman and the children that he has with those women. It's a responsibility. Nowadays, we turn it into a pleasure. Yeah, polygyny, you know what I'm saying? I got more than one wife. And, yeah, I'm going to be the man, I'm going to be the Mac, a player, and all that. No, 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 no. It's about being responsible. So if you try to deal with multiple women on a steady basis, not talking about no side chick, you know, you just have some little fun or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm talking about dealing with a woman seriously on a daily basis where it's known that your time is being divided from your main woman and she's in acceptance or agreement with that, then it has to be responsible. It can't just be on some, yo, I'm going to fuck this other bitch and I'll be back. Like, nah, you know what I'm saying? A woman putting up with that and no woman should put up with that, but you should be, you should be more so responsible about what you do. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. So, and um, I guess we're going to be going on for another hour, y'all. That's this session in my hand. All right. Oh, no. Right. No, I'm going to just land on this last point I was going to say, right? So now, verse 14. And God said, let there be, now, in, in our 13, and the evening and the morning was the third day. Now, that was the third day, right? Now, in the, in the beginning of the fourth day, it says, and God said, let there be lights in the, in the, in the, in the firmament of, of the heaven to divide the day from the night. I thought, th I thought that already happened in, 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 the, in the first day when he made, and he said, let there be light. And there was light. And he divided the night from the day and the evening and the, and the morning, the morning and the evening was the first day. I thought he already did that. Now, all of a sudden, again, he says, and God says, let there be lights, this time lights, plural, in the firmaments of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons. See sun, the, the, the sun in the sea. So the sun shines the water on the sea, causing the uh, different seasons. You know what I'm saying? Sea suns. So anyway, for the days and years, you know what I'm saying? So you know you got different weather, different days and, and throughout the year. Winter, spring, fall, and you know, summer and all that. So um remember earlier I was talking about the winters, I mean the summer, the, the winter solstice. And there's also a summer solstice, you know what I'm saying? But the winter solstice is dealing with the three-day death of the sun and the resurrection shining back the light on the earth and so forth and so forth. Um, all right, so, all right, boom. And, and let them be lights in the firmaments of the heavens and give light upon the earth, and it was so. Now, didn't he already did that before? Didn't he already do that before? And God made two great lights, the great light to rule the day and the lesser lights to rule the, to rule the night. And he made the stars also. So now you know the great light that rules the day is the sun, the almighty sun. And the great light that rules the night is the moon. You know what I'm saying? And he made the stars also. So that there you go. Sun, moon, and star. Sun, moon, and star. Man, woman, and child. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding. In the name of Allah. It always been that. Even the Bible tells you the same thing. So well, I've been telling you all religions and all that, whatever, they're all the same. It's all saying the same thing. I just got to know how to read. You know what I'm saying? But am I reading to my own understanding? Or am I breaking this shit down like you never heard before? Yeah, that's what it is. So anyway, so he says, right. And he says, he made, and he made the stars also. So if that's the case, then, you know what I'm saying? You made the sun twice. And then you made the moon and stars. Like, so now there's two suns out there. So where's his first sun at? Where's the first sun that divided the night from the day in the in the morning and the evening or the first day? What where's the where's the sun from the first day? You know what I'm saying? Now all of a sudden, three days later, there's a whole nother, there's a new sun, a moon and stars. I thought you already did that. See what I'm saying? So that's where they say don't mix science with religion, because then you start to see these contradictions. 
and you start to see these, these slip ups like hold on wait a minute wait a minute you messed up there buddy uh something wasn't right there sorry king james you should have you should have you should have maybe took that out you should have excerpt that right there because you just you, you just fucked up you know what i'm saying yeah so you know what i mean anyway so and the evening in the morning were the fourth day and so forth and so forth right so i ain't even gonna go further into it but as you can see, you know what I mean? I just broke down that story right there. That's in the very Bible. That's in the Bible. See what I'm saying? How it broke down. This is why you got to know the science of the universe so that you don't get fooled by these fairy tale stories. So this this, this, this is the reason for that. This is the reason for critical thinking. This was a critical thinking exercise right here. I hope it was for, for some of y'all. A critical thinking exercise. Think about these things. Go back and watch this video again. Let me end it right now so it don't be too long. Go back and watch this video again. Go back over the things I said. Share this with your mom, your pops, your grandma, everybody. Share with everybody. Play it in the house like on a, on a Saturday or Sunday morning. And let everybody hear it. And be like, yeah, yo, damn, he dropped some shit though. That guy, I never thought about that. And he went and got the Bible too. He broke it down from the Bible. It said it right there in the Bible. Now you going to go against that? You going to go against the word of God? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, yo, this is the God, the true and living God, Lord Messiah Allah, peace to the fam. You know what I'm saying? I'll see y'all in the next joint. Once again, I'm here to comfort y'all, not to make you mad. Don't be mad at me. I'm just here to give you the knowledge, the information, for you to critically think, for you to open your third eye and see things for what they truly are, not for what they appear to be. Today's mathematics is knowledge equality. And I acknowledge my equality, so therefore I shall improve that I be the seven, which is God. One plus six equals seven. When you acknowledge your equality, you shall improve your supremacy as the God. Peace.